Hi, everybody. This is Greg Vadney uh, with the RAR West Art Museum. I'm in the historic Vilas RAR mansion. And under normal circumstances, uh, this mansion would be filled with guests and filled with decorations for our Christmas in the mansion. But uh, of course, uh, with things being as they are, we're coming to you uh, virtually rather than in person. Um, you know, we, we have decked out the, the mansion uh, so that when you drive by, you do get a little bit of taste of uh, Christmas in the mansion through our windows. Uh, and we invite you to, to come by the RAR West Art Museum during the holiday season and check it out. If you're from out of the, uh, the area, or even if you, you were away from the area or, or in the area and over the past few years uh, have made it a point of coming to the downtown area of Manitowoc, you have no doubt seen some massive change. And a lot of that change has been artistic change to our downtown in the form of public art, especially downtown murals, whether it's inside our public buildings or on the streets, uh, in public spaces and also on private buildings, hopefully you've seen some really incredible changes and artistic changes. And uh, we're here tonight with uh, the person that uh, is probably the most responsible for making those artistic changes, Erin Labonte. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on Erin before I turn it over to her, Erin uh, received her Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point and uh, a Master of Fine Arts from the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art in Philadelphia. Uh, she has done artistic residences in uh, around the world, in Costa Rica, in uh, Argentina, has exhibited both nationally and internationally. And uh, she has also um, got some phenomenal experience both in academia as well as uh, in galleries around the country. She practices a lot of artistic media uh, in her own studio work and is also an advocate for bringing art into the public sphere. And she's gonna talk a lot about that tonight. She is dedicated to inspiring and educating young people uh, for their own professional artistic explorations. Uh, in that regard, uh, many of you probably know Erin as uh, an associate professor of art in uh, at Holy Family College, uh, also known as Silver Lake College. And uh, for the last um, nine years, uh, she's been here in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. I want to make a point, too, that she is a Wisconsin native. And this is, uh, well, she'll talk about how much her being a Wisconsinite informs her not only what she does artistically, but her passion for doing public arts here in Manitowoc and in Wisconsin. She's also the co-founder of Yonder, uh, an art space and gallery in Algoma, Wisconsin. You should definitely check that out when you get the opportunity to as things start to settle and you feel like travel is uh, possible again. Erin um, is also a board member at the RAR West uh, Art Museum and has done a um, superb job of advocating for the RAR West Art Museum to be involved in a public sphere, meaning being involved in the arts beyond what happens in our building. Uh, she has taken great strides in helping us to form a public arts committee at the RAR West Art Museum and has certainly been the strongest voice for making sure that what we do artistically as a city is not confined to a single space. Instead, it's something that is shared throughout our area and shared publicly. And tonight she's going to discuss with you uh, some of that public art in the form of the mural projects that Erin has been working on over the past years. With that said, Erin, thank you so much for joining us this evening, and I'll turn it over to you. Craig, thank you for the introduction. Um, thank you to the Raw West Art Museum for having me tonight and for Diana um, for putting this together. Um, and thank you to all of you for tuning in uh, to learn about the work that I and other artists have been completing in Manitowoc. 
Uh, before moving to Manitowoc, like Greg had said, um, where I taught at Silver Lake College for nine years, I had been living in Philadelphia, completing my master's degree in studio art. Um, and in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where I was teaching English at a small English institute. Philadelphia is known for its mural arts program, no doubt the best in the country. Murals celebrate neighborhood diversity, culture, nature, and sometimes they just celebrate art and culture. Um, in Buenos Aires, the streets were covered in graffiti, murals, signs condemning or celebrating politicians and other aspects of Argentine life. So needless to say, when I arrived in Manitowoc, I really missed this narrative on the city walls. There were no stories uh, being told about identity, creative culture, or Manitowoc's history. Um, in 2012, I was on the board for Mainly Manitowoc when we received our first Wisconsin Arts Board grant um, that led to Jason Priggy creating our first downtown mural. I had absolutely uh, no intention at that time of becoming a public artist. Um, but I was, I was definitely excited about the work. Um, the next year, however, we received another Wisconsin Arts Board grant and I was part of the mural team. I started to build murals into my painting class curriculum and completed seven murals with student groups. Three of those students have gone on now to create murals in the community um, themselves. Um, and since 2012, I have led or been part of over 30 mural projects in Manitowoc and the surrounding communities. There's an energy for public arts and I'm really stoked to be part of that energy. Um, and I feel really proud of the work that we've been doing in Manitowoc. Many people have been involved in these projects. Um, there's been support, a large amount of support from the city, from the Rar West Art Museum, business owners, private sponsors, other artists. And I need to say that this work is not just my own. Um, especially I need to say um, that this is my team that I work with. Um, so to the left of me is David Carpenter. Um, I've been painting with David since 2014. I hashtag David as David Carpenter can paint anything because David Carpenter can legit, he can paint anything. Um, so every time that I go into a project with David, I have this incredible confidence that whatever is designed, whatever it is, it's gonna end up being amazing. To the right of me is Don Crumpus. Um, Don is my husband and he is an excellent designer. Um, and so what Don does is he puts together um, the images and he prepares them for the process of, of painting a mural, which I'll show you along the way here. We all work very collaboratively. I mean, we all paint and we all design. Um, I think that my main role is kind of organizing and being the arts advocate, you know, being part of committees and um, more visible in the community. Um, I work on getting us our projects. So. I was asked to speak about the murals that we completed in 2020. And I was worried with COVID that this would be kind of a quiet summer, but we had a really great um, summer painting murals and, and we did some really great projects. And if I were to talk to you about all of them, we would be here for a very long time. So I decided that I was gonna focus on just two projects that we completed in downtown Manitowoc on um, what I would call like the big shebang walls. Um, a couple of walls that I've been really looking forward to painting. Um, one of them is this wall, the old Milwaukee PC wall, um, which is just highly visible in the downtown area. And then the other one is this, which is uh, Lakeside Foods wall. And I'm gonna start with Lakeside Foods wall um, primarily because it goes through the entire process. Um, I, um, I approached Lakeside Foods and asked them if we could do a mural on their wall. Um, so this is a good project to really look at like initiating a mural project um, to completion. So I put together this kind of how-to. So first off, find a wall, right? So I found the wall at um, Lakeside Foods. Get approval from the wall owner. Um, and for that, you know, you might have to do some digging around to find out who, who owns the wall um, and then kind of hunt them down. It's nice to have a contract in place. And I, I usually put a contract in place with, for every um, project that we do. And basically that outlines the timeline of the mural, you know, um, when the owner or the sponsors or whoever you're working with can expect different designs to be done. It helps us as artists too, to have some, um, some deadlines. Um, it puts together funding sources um, and just kind of lays out the whole project. Um, for this project, I also had to look for sponsorship 
And um, I haven't had to do that that much. A lot of the projects that we've done have um, been through private building owners or um, the city has, has definitely sponsored a lot of projects. Um, with this project, I sent out emails to different, um, different people in the community to see if they'd wanna be involved, um, different businesses and organizations. Um, and then I, I wanted to form a relationship so that maybe I could come back to them. So I was in contact with them throughout the process. I sent them the design um, before we started painting it. So they kind of had like an in and knew, um, you know, knew what we'd be painting before anybody else. And then, you know, I followed up with thank you letters, um, you know, trying to form that relationship and get people excited again about public art. Um, with these sponsorship dollars, I paid the artists. So I paid myself, David and Don, along with other artists that were involved in the project. Um, I think it's really important to make sure that the artists are, you know, getting paid decently. Um, one thing that was really great with this project too, you know, finding a wall and kind of initiating the project is that like I was creating work for myself and for these other artists. So um, I think it's really a great approach. And that's another reason I'm kind of doing this how to is because I think that as artists, we might have a vision that other people don't necessarily see. So if we can figure out how to follow through on it, we can make a lot of these things happen and possibly make more work um, for artists in our community. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit later on how I also thank the sponsors on a design wall. And I, I sent out a press release and, you know, tried to make sure that their names were out there in the community as much as possible. So people knew that they were um, supporting public art. Then uh, you put together your design. Um, it depends, you know, how the project is, who you need to get approval for the design from. Um, for this project, we needed it from Lakeside Foods. And then um, in Manitowoc, you need to bring it to a committee um, with the city. And basically, they just check to make sure that uh, that the mural fits the sign ordinance. So it's there's that's part of the easement, which is below here. And um, that easement is a basic contract with you, the wall owner, and then the mayor signs it, you know, saying that the, the mural will be upkept, um, that there is approval by that committee etc and that's just kind of filed away at city hall and and already exists there Oop. then you get to the fun part which is painting um, and then you can put on your graffiti coat which i'll share in a second too so the reason that i had approached lakeside foods was because i am part of the lakeshore artist guild and we were going to be putting on our third annual um art slam event and the art slam is basically um an event where we try to create energy and get people working really hands-on and collaborative and engaged with the arts in the downtown of Manitowoc. And for two years, I had put together a paint by number mural. When I came up with the idea of this paint by number mural, um, I just like, I wanted to get people engaged in the actual process of painting the wall and to feel like, you know, that's, that's my wall. Like we did that together. And I was a little worried that people wouldn't come out and participate, but in six hours, our first mural was completed. In 2019, uh, we did a similar project um, in the image here is Dolly Stokes, who's a real community le leader and also a board member at the RAR West. And her husband, um, her late husband, Ron Stokes, was an artist and educator in the community. So I spent some time with Dolly going through his images and designed this mural as a kind of homage to him um, using, you can see in the background there, kind of like he had called it a goggle of frogs. And then we um, did some images of his lollipop tree. But you can see the numbers there and each number correlated then with a color of paint. And people of all ages came out and filled in this image again in like six hours, um, 130 people participated. And then this is the final project or the final product. So when I contacted Lakeside Foods, I was interested, I was thinking that we'd be doing a paint by number mural. But then COVID came along and, um, you know, I don't think we wanted that many hands on deck, um, but we still wanted to create an image that was going to be an impact to the community. And I had reached out to Lakeside Foods in September of 2019. So this project took quite a bit of time to come to fruition. Uh, we finished the project in September 2020. And... I had proposed that we make a mural that says home of the good spirit. Home of the good spirit means in Ojibwa, it means man or is Manitowoc. And I always thought that was really cool, kind of positive, upbeat, and um, it might be kind of a nice welcome sign in Manitowoc. In March, we got the go ahead 
um, after lots of conversations with Lakeshore Foods, um, that they would they were excited to have us work on their wall and that they would have it primed and all ready to go for us by July. Um, so, so then we had to um, start working on the design and uh, we did a, a portion of this Home of the Good Spirit design and sent it to Lakeside Foods. And I was kind of taken aback by their response. Um, I had thought that I had been very, um, very open about um, the subject matter. And once again, this was kind of a different project because we didn't have a contract in place um, where usually I like to do that. But they had shared that they wanted um, a mural that was more about what was happening in the world today um, and represented our community, um, you know, the diversity in our community, who we are now and who we want to be in the future. And, um, you know, by this time, Black Lives Matter movement had really taken off. I mean, there's just there's a lot going on in our world. Um, lots of conversations about social inequities um, and and lots of conversations about even um, you know, race and culture within art and how to approach how to approach that. So I was kind of taken, I was kind of taken aback. I wasn't sure what to do. David, Don, and I started talking um, and kind of brainstorming, but you know, we're three white artists and um, coming from you know relatively similar backgrounds. So we were trying to figure out how we were gonna create a mural, you know, that represented, really represented our community. Um, and the diversity and, you know, all the different people within it. Um, and of course we could never um, represent everybody, but I started doing some research and I looked into the demographics of Manage Walk and uh, there's a Caucasian population, African-American, indigenous, Asian-American and Hispanic population. And I started thinking, well, what if I reached out to an artist from all of those backgrounds to see if they would create images celebrating their identity and their culture? And then, um, you know, David, Don, and my job would be to, to really organize it, to um, put the images together in a final design and then do the painting. And I wasn't sure if that was the right approach and I wanted to really be sensitive to it. So I, I reached out to some colleagues and some people that I really appreciate their perspectives. Um, and I reached out to um, one of my old students, um, Brianna Thomas Butler, who uh, just always kind of had opinions, you know, and I, I knew that she would she would share you know, how she was really thinking about it. And she um, was a, an artist, um, an Afro artist that's really interested in creating work about her identity. And um, when I reached out to her, she said, you know, Erin, I think that's a great idea. You know, right now we need to work on educating ourselves and educating each other um, and, and trying to figure out how to, you know, make, make our world better, right? So I pitched the idea to Lakeside Foods. And I, I pitched it using this imagery of Shepherd Fairy. Um, and what I really liked about Shepherd Fairy's images is, especially after I was spending some more time looking at these walls, I realized, you know, home of the good spirit wanted to look good there. Um, during the winter, I could see that full wall, but as spring started setting in and then summer, like I could see all the leaves were, were blocking, uh, you know, the wall. So if I, if we did an image more like this, it's somewhat fragmented and collaged where each image could be kind of a standalone image. And I thought that um, that would be a better approach overall. I also really like his um, his subtle color palette, very limited. I thought that would be a nice way to to um, pull the image together. And I like the the subject matter of kind of this revolution or this fight for for justice and for change. So I shared these ideas. Um, this is one that Shepard Gary did in Milwaukee really recently. If you get a chance to check it out. But I shared these images and kind of this concept with um, Lakeside Foods. And I ended up, I got the go ahead. They had some ideas, like they wanted a little bit of agricultural background pulled into it. Um, they did not want it to be a call to action, but just a positive image celebrating um, the diversity in the community. And, and you know, and I think when we're done, I, I heard on a podcast the other day, somebody used the language of like quietly radical. And I kind of feel like that's what our mural ended up being. It's not, you know, as loud um, and radical as Shepherd, Fair, Shepherd Fairy's images, but it's just kind of perfect for Manage Walk for our community. Um, I had mentioned the sponsorship wall and I, and I pulled this image in because I wanted to share it with you. This is the second time that we put sponsors' names on a wall. We had done it last summer um, with a mural that we did um, in Novak Service Center, who's one of our great sponsors, and sponsored that wall as well. And um, 
part of that sign ordinance that I had said that you need to get the mural approved through is not to have any advertising. So the city had seen um, having this kind of information as advertising and in a conversation, you know, as, as the, pu the public dollars have been, um, you know, the city's been so great about using room tax money and different funding for public arts. Uh, we really want to get the private sector involved in sponsoring some of these murals. So um, we had a conversation about that and recognized that it's important to, to have a place where you can, um, you know, put those people that are generous enough to donate kind of in the spotlight. Um, so that's what this is. So I reached out to all the organizations um, and um, one of my, my good friends from the Artist Guild already had a lot of the logos. So we projected those on. We also projected on um, all of the contributing artists' um, signatures. So I had, I had reached out to each artist and asked for their signatures and for their headshots and for an artist statement and um, artist bio. I wanted to make sure that, you know, this project was about, you know, was about them, was about um, our community. Uh, and it's interesting because, you know, this project really, it's just, it doesn't belong to anybody. Um, I feel excited to be able to be the one here talking about it. Um, but here in the left corner is Brianna Thomas Butler. In the center, we have Brad Dogs. To the right, Kay Solander, below her, Sonia Vasquez, and then um, Tisha Hang. So these are the artists that I reached out to and I asked them to create images celebrating um, their identity, their culture, or what unity means to them. And really the idea was to bring, um, you know, uh, varying perspectives to this wall, you know, more than what David and Don and I could do or represent. Uh, we didn't want to just use symbols that were unauthentic and maybe belonged in like a 1980s like history classroom or something like that. We wanted this to be real um, and to mean something to the community. And, and again, you know, in the past couple of years, we had had everybody come out and actually paint the mural. And this was a new a new idea of getting people involved where they were part of the design process. And I think it was really, it really worked out fantastic. So in July, I feel like it was like, I think like July 10th was like my deadline for everybody to send in their images. And so I got all these emails with images and artist statements and it felt like Christmas to me. Um, so I started to like whip together one of my terrible Photoshop designs where I just like to see everything and kind of visualize it. Um, and that's what's on the top here. Um, and then below that is after I had spent some more time thinking about it and trying to think about how these images are gonna be joined. Um, and after some conversations with Don, um, about the design, this was my this was my sketch that I then handed off to Don, to Don, um, and luckily we can speak a similar language because he turned that into this. Um, so this was the first design that we took to Lakeside Foods, and you can see we incorporated kind of this element of of agriculture, which worked out really well because our Hmong artist had um, shared a, a traditional Hmong farmer as her imagery. And then Don was kind of creating this flow across the page. On the top here is the final design um, where Don and I had it. Where, um, and I'm going to show you, I've got some other images that will show it better, but there's a lot that, um, that was added in this design process. It, um, uh, Don approached the image like a three or like a multiple um, layered woodcut. Um, so there's there's lots of line work that was added and it makes it so that, you know, even with all of these different hands from the different artists, so there's kind of a flow to the image. So I sent this image on to David and David's response was, well, I really like it, but I, <clears throat> excuse me, but I really liked the way that um, you were interested in Shepherd Fairy's limited color palette. And I was like, oh, you know what? Like I did too. I liked that aspect. I said, do you know how to do you know how to do that? Can you make it like that? So him and his um, wife, Stephanie Carpenter, sent back this image like 20 minutes later. I said, that's awesome. But I really like red. I just really wanted that red rose. I don't know. For some reason, it stuck in my, my mind. Um, so this was the final image that we sent to Lakeside Foods. And then this is um, this is the completed mural.
So our process after we have that design um, figured out, which uh, we, we kind of realized that the more that we we do in the design process, the easier the painting process is. So we, we put a lot of work into that aspect. Um, then we pull out our Hallman Lindsay color swatches and um, I will put in like a, ooh, for a Hallman Lindsay because they're really good to us. Um, they donated all the paint for this project and this isn't the first project they've really assisted us with. Um, so we pull out our color swatches and we match the colors um, to our screen. Uh, we don't print out the image, but we match um, and try to find the colors exactly on our screen. And that usually ends up in like a notebook note like, like this. Um, you know, nothing really fancy or organized. Uh, you'll see in a different, and the next mural I'm gonna share that is much more organized. Um, but just like a base, you know, grass color, and then this is the number or whatever. And a lot of the times we end up, you know, mixing quite a few colors as well. Um, and we think about that too when we're ordering our colors. Then we go in and we project. Um, so you can see here Don turned the design into an outline. And I usually when we project, this is kind of the my least favorite part of the process. Something usually goes terribly wrong. Um, the projector doesn't work or something happens. Um, but this went super smoothly. We had two projectors going at the same time and we were just kind of like moving down the wall, um, filling it in and it worked out perfectly. We you know did some measuring and whatnot. And then we end up with like a, a coloring book that needs to be filled in basically. Um, so that's what we come back the next day to when we work. And um, here you can see that we're laying in colors. I threw this picture in here um, because I was feeling really inspired starting this project uh, with so many things happening in our world um, and so many, you know, social inequities and you know ways that we just we need to we need to get better to one another i felt like i felt really positive about using public art as a platform to to talk about some of that um, and to bring people together so um i just threw this image in there because it felt like you know when you don't know what you can do <laughs> to try to make the world a better place like it felt like the world was kind of a better place um creating this mural which felt really good here's david and don painting the yellows and reds can be the roughest. You got to put a few coats on. And now this is the image. This is an image by Sonia Vasquez, um, one of our artists. And I'm just going to share a little bit about what all the artists um, said about their work. And then um, you can kind of compare the images. And again, you know, I we we had to rework the images so that they'd flow. Well, Don reworked a lot of the images so that they would flow. Um, you can see through you know the line work and stuff but we really wanted to keep the content and the integrity of the image because we knew that the artists put a lot of time into this and that you know through the statements even like they're meaningful um so when i i shared with the artists or asked them to participate you know i said that i, I would do my best to make sure that they were represented well and I, I feel like all of the artists were really um happy with the way they were represented which makes me happy so Sonia says, I was thinking about my own experiences being half Mexican and half white. I grew up primarily within a white dominated city and white culture. I wanted to take the things that were significant to me connecting with Mexican culture. And the woman in this figure is a representation of her grandmother as a young woman. And then this is a representation of her father who had migrated to the US with his mother at a young age. Um, he's always been the embodiment of the hardworking and passionate immigrant in America. The mountains and goats behind him represent where he lived, what he did in Mexico, and the laborious task it was to migrate to migrate and live successfully in the US. And um, this one I know looks like him because people were coming out and um, and saying that, you know, throughout the process. They're like, oh, there he is. Uh, so that was that was fun. Um, this is work by Brad Dogs. Um, Brad considers himself an American primitive um, for having adopted native art in an effort to make creative works that would pop. And Brad had shared, and I just like all of his work is so fun. He had shared these images and this image is this image. And I asked him if he would make something that was um, a little bit closer to his own identity and maybe showed um, more Oneida background. And he created this turtle. He's part of the turtle clan. He says, I'm a lifelong resident of Manitowoc, Wisconsin, and a registered member of the Oneida tribe. Federally recognized as First Nations Iroquois Band, one of the five founding nations of this land. 
The Oneida fought for the revolutionaries during the War of Independence. The Oneida brought corn to General George Washington and his starving troops, teaching them how to cook it and eat it. My great-great-grandfather Cornelius Hill was the last hereditary Oneida chief and its first Christian minister. The church he and his followers built still stands on the Oneida reservation today. Um, and I got to paint the turtle and the turtle is probably one of my favorite parts of the mural. This, these images are by Kay Solander. Um, Kay is um, an Upper Peninsula native who was a student of art and theology at Silver Lake College and is now living in the Manitowoc community. And these images um, were a little bit too abstract, possibly, for Lakeside Foods when, um, when we were going through images. They didn't really understand this as a human heart. Um, inside of it, there's Malala and Greta Thunberg and civil rights activists. And it's you know a really powerful image that like if I had full control of the wall would definitely be included. Um, to the right here, we have peace lilies, um, which were again, kind of abstract for um, Lakeside Foods to understand. So we, we took her concept and we, um, put it here and have these um, young people watering the lily. And Kay shares that peace lilies are associated with the rebirth of the soul and transcending beyond. Understanding various cultures and striving for unity are direct results of transcending beyond how we see the world and being reborn to have a broader view of the world around us. This work is by Brianna Thomas Butler. Um, and again, it's maybe a little, little revolutionary for um, Lakeside Foods. Um, but um, fantastic imagery, you know, the fist with um, different dates from the civil rights, um, important dates from the civil rights movement. Um, here, this young man with the crown, and then um, down here is an ankh cross, which is Egyptian for life. This is another work by by Brie and this this woman with kind of these roots coming out. And we used this root theme, so we were inspired by this imagery, and we did use this um, within the image, but. I had had Brie as a student in digital photography and she had created these beautiful images of her sister. And so I asked Brie if we could use one of those for the mural and she said, absolutely. So this is an image of her sister wearing a dashiki, which is a traditional West African garment. Um, and she said, I wanted to showcase the emotion and beauty in the brown girl's soul and show off how she is delicate and strong all in, the, all in one with the help of the Lord himself. So David took that image and kind of did a drawing and here she is jumping for joy. The, the last artist um, to introduce here is Tisha Hang. Um, Tisha is a Hmong artist. Um, she says that my parents are Hmong immigrants who came here when they were around 19 years old and had me and my three younger siblings all here in Manitowoc. And she wanted to create imagery of Hmong people that as they are well known for their sewing skills and they use it to make clothes and to record history and events with motifs and symbols. Um, so I had asked Tisha as well for some more um, Hmong motifs and we kind of built that into the background here. And then she also included a Hmong farmer um, with a traditional basket here. And this is a this is a section I just want to you know kind of share again some of this detail work I was talking about that Don built into the design you know kind of this fabulous way of of joining each of these artists together you know even with the rabbit kind of hopping here the clouds um, it all it all really flows and um, you know I think that we are all feeling really proud of it all of all of the artists and everybody involved. Um, this is us spraying the graffiti protecting coat on. Um, it's like a, it's a sealant that is not easy to brush on. And, um, we budgeted in this project to buy a paint sprayer and it like saved our, like it saved a lot of time. So that was, that was really great. So that was the Lakeside Foods project. Um, it, like I said, like it was a big project. It was really rewarding. It was a great way to bring a lot of artists together into one, um, one collaborative work. Um, and again, to create opportunity for ourselves. Um, so the next wall um, is the old Milwaukee PC building. And um, here we are, the artists. Um, to the left of me is uh, Rebecca Jabs, another local artist. And I mean, to the right of me, <laughs> and to the left of me uh, is David Carpenter. And, uh, for this project, the Milwaukee, the old Milwaukee PC building, um, this wall has been, you know, ever since I was on the board of directors for mainly managed walk, people have been eyeballing this wall. Um, and this year, Nick Miller um, from the Community Development Office got the go ahead for us to work on this. 
And he brought it to the public arts committee. And I kind of stepped up and said, you know, how much, how much we'd love to do, how to, to have a hand in painting that wall. Um, and so Becca, uh, David, and I got the opportunity to create different mural designs and then bring them back to the public arts committee. And the public arts committee chose which design they wanted to move forward with. Um, for this project, it was nice because Nick did a lot of that organizing. You know, he got the wall prepped and primed. Um, he kind of worked out the budget. Hammond Construction um, donated the lift and Sherwin Williams donated the paint. Um, and this was, again, another um, city funded project. So when starting with the design, um, you know, this is this was kind of different because it's coming from nowhere. Where last time we had all the artists, you know, sending in in their um, their images. Uh, what I usually do is I start a Google file and I just start going online and I just start pulling things that are interesting to me or things that might work for inspiration. So these were a couple images were, that were in that Google file. And the main thing is I was looking for color. And David and Beck and I had talked about that. Like it can be really dreary in Manitowoc through a lot of the winter season. So we wanted something that was gonna be impactful, bright, uh, and colorful for everybody. I, in 2015 or 2014, David and I had um, started doing some research on Ruth and John West, um, who were very important members of the Manitowoc community. Um, Ruth West, who's in the images here, um, contributed, you know, her, her private collection to the Raw West Art Museum. Um, she was an advocate for, for art, um, for beauty within our community. She started the table setting um, event, which still happens at the Raw West. And basically it's this idea of kind of teaching people or having people think about how art belongs in your home, right? And matching kind of your, your dinner setting um, with a piece of fine art. Anyways, I am... Um, I think she's a fabulous lady and I really wish I would have met her. And I've been wanting to create an artwork that was kind of an homage to her. So I started uh, looking back into my emails and uh, back when David and I were doing some research, we had sat down with Bob Fay, um, who is a historical consultant and author of a 2016 report, The West of the Lake, The Residence and Gardens of Ruth West and St. Ruth St. John, um, and John Dunham West. And so when we had sat down with him, he was in the middle of his research. And it was really great. He he went through photos with us. Um, these were some of the photos um, that we had we had collected. Uh, the image on the right here I really like because it shows her gardens. And I did incorporate tulips into the, des the design um, that they ended up, that the committee ended up choosing. Um, so I feel like I should kind of backtrack just a little bit. When this project started moving forward, it was like right when COVID was hitting. And yeah, so that was like weird energy. You know, it's still weird energy. 2020 has been a heck of a year. Um, so I was talking with Don on a walk and, you know, it, it didn't seem like the right thing to do as a public artist to kind of ignore what was happening. Um, I wanted to create an image that was upbeat and positive um, and kind of reference what was happening in the world, but in a way that was timeless. and. This just this just worked out so well. Um, I chose the image on the left of Ruth West to work with in the design because of the smile on her face. And Bob Fay had shared to, you know, if you're going to ever paint Ruth West on a wall, like make sure you paint her when she's younger. And I can totally respect that because if somebody was ever going to do a mural of me, like hopefully it'd be in my prime. Um, so chose this image of Ruth and it worked out so great because then I was reading an art forward article by Dolly Stokes. And there was this quote of, I am a very lucky person that I have been generously endowed with an imagination and given the health and strength to do its bidding. I'm like thinking like, wow, you know, imagination, health and strength, like those are things that we need right now, right? Um, with, with COVID hitting and like all of the uncertainties. And, you know, as I was doing kind of visual research, I was running into a lot of images of people with masks on and whatever. And it was like, that didn't, that didn't seem right. You know, we needed something, um, that made people smile and gave them hope every day um, in kind of, a, kind of a dark time. So this is what I do. <laughs> I start putting things into Photoshop and just kind of collaging and seeing what can happen with it. Um, and then I sat down with Don and we started really cleaning it up in Illustrator, um, thinking about the text and the colors and how they overlay one another. And this design and this design are the ones that I shared um, 
that I shared with the committee. And I think it's great that they chose the one with purple hair. It just kind of adds a little oomph. Um, in the design process too, you can see here um, that the tulips are all kind of closed lid. And as we we kept working on the design after it was selected by the committee and, and Becca brought forward that maybe, you know, they should have different faces. Um, so I think that added a lot to the image. Um, we included uh, Ruth's signature here, which um, the West Foundation provided for me. Um, so then this is a much more organized uh, way of seeing kind of our the way that we approach the the image um, with paint. David went in and he selected all the colors here um, and matched them. So um, then we had kind of our coloring book a lot like the last one where we start filling it in um, after we we do the outline. So uh, Don created the outline and we projected it. And then the next day we came back and we had this, this coloring book um, and the fun begins where we can um, start laying in our colors. Um, Becca and I did a lot of work on the ground and then um, David and I started taking turns up here because up in the lift, because it was like, it was really hot. I don't know, David did a lot of that work. Um, he also freehanded the Ruth St. John West. Um, like I said, it's really great to have him on the team. Um, and then this is the final image. And this is my made up graph about art and happiness that I like to share um, coming from academia. Um, everybody always wanted to see charts. And I strongly believe that people are more happy after seeing art, um, especially in places where they don't expect it. And that's why I think that these murals and this public art is so important. Um, you know, it, it's, it activates our life and it becomes kind of a landmark um, within our community and builds community spirit. So like I said, I'm really proud to be part of the work that is telling Manitowoc stories on its walls um, and, and getting the opportunity to reach out into other communities and do that work as well. Here I have my website where I encourage you to um, to take a look at the other works that we did this summer. Like I said, you know, I wanted to share them all, but that would just be too long. Um, and all of my past murals, all of our past murals as well. Um, and if you're interested in any mural work or anything, you know, please um, shoot me an email and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> that was great. I know, uh, Diana, uh, Diana Bolander, our curator, and I uh, were both like super, <laughs> we were joking about how on our different, uh, I'm watching this on the phone, she's watching it from a laptop, and we're both like hunched over the screen with big smiles on our face. <laughs> Good. So you've raised our spirits just talking about murals. Um, you know, there, uh, if, if, uh, any viewers have questions, you can you can certainly put them in the comments section. We'll uh, we'll fast forward them on to um, Aaron. But uh, one of the questions that I had, you know, a lot of a lot of art and a lot of art products are in, in, uh, intensely personal. You know, the the artistic um, production, if you will, is is a solo effort. But with these there's no doubt that there's uh there's a collaborative necessity both collaborative with other artists uh but also uh, especially on private like there's definite sacrifice that has to go into um to to your artistic vision can you talk a little bit about like the the challenges of the in that regard in when you're doing murals um, yeah, there, I mean, there definitely are sacrifices. It's, it would be, um, very interesting to be able to like walk up to a wall and paint something that I would make in my personal studio work. Um, and that opportunity doesn't come around very much. I, I create very different work in my studio and, um, you know, murals, they take up a lot of time in the summer and into the fall. And I do some planning work in the winter, but during the winter, I'm mainly working, you know, I'm, I've, locked up in my studio and making my, my personal work. Um, and I enjoy kind of that separation of the two different mediums. I've learned a lot from the collaborative approach. I've learned a lot 
painting with David. I've learned a lot sitting down and designing with Don. Um, you know, I, I feel like I'm always learning from the people I'm working with and that with these mural projects, they're, they're way bigger than anything that I could ever do on my own. Um, and I've come to realize too, and I think it was when David and I did the Red Arrow mural and um, I think that was 2015, that it's really important in, in making public art. Um, and, I, and I think that you could, you could go either way, but the public art that I tend to lean towards is more like community art. And I think about the audience a lot more and I think about what the whole community is going to react to or um, you know, um, feel kind of an ownership to. So, so that's why I, I choose subject matter, you know, like Ron Stoke imagery, like as I was working on that mural, people were coming by and being like, oh, I had Ron as a teacher, you know, and, and Red Arrow, I think so many people were part of the Red Arrow um, division. So they felt a connection to that work. And hopefully, you know, with um, with Lakeside Foods and with the Ruth West mural, there's that same kind of thing. So I, um, yeah, so that's, I mean, there's challenges um, and there's, it's, David had mentioned the other day this idea of like when when other people start sharing your work, it's really exciting. And I think that that's something that with this public artwork that we're doing, it's like, you know, I can, I can put it out on social media, but like it's not just mine, like other people like want to be part of the conversation and share it too. And, and that feels really good. Yeah. Sorry. I'm Diana. I'm from the museum. I'm just popping in, Erin, because we had a couple comments that really relate well to what you just said. Um, Stephanie Carpenter said that she likes how thoughtful you are about uh, creating work that is so relevant to our community. And then um, Diane Dwayne Badney um, talked about how when her daughters drive by the paint by number murals, they always claim it as theirs. So I'm sure Greg can speak to that, too. Absolutely. Yeah, we worked on that uh, together during uh, a few art slams, and and uh, yeah, it's a, it, I think it's a memorable experience for uh, our community, whether they're young or old, to feel a sense of shared ownership, mm -hmm. and hopefully to feel um, the the power of agency with, that goes along with that, <coughs> the power of knowing that they have beautified that permanently their surroundings. And Jill's talking here about how, what a great job you do, Erin, of bringing people together. And it makes her happy and proud of our communities. Oh, thank you, Jill. And if anyone has any questions for Erin, you can ask them in the chats and we can convey them. I'm what lucky enough to live in a neighborhood where there's two, at least two murals that you've done, one at um, La Dida Books and one that's just a private mural in an alley. And we came across it, my son, my six-year-old son and I did, and it was so delightful and magical to just come across that like a, a block from my house. So I, I really appreciate all the work that you've done in the city. Thank you. Yeah, that was a that was a fun mural where we were told that we can do whatever we want. Um, so. <laughs> So Don really enjoyed that, <laughs> like this giant purple octopus form, and yeah, it's very playful. And well, my son that, likes to swim. Go ahead. Let's do it. So I great. think that kind of leads towards too is a message of, you know, on your on your own personal property, if it's you know maybe the inside of your garage or you know find finding some large canvases to play with for anybody out there to to um, think about ways that you can beautify uh, your, your private spaces, if not public spaces. Yeah, this um, summer we had um, we had an elderly man, he called me and he's like, are you the one that does murals? And I was like, yeah, you know, and he said, well, I would like to have my garage painted. And he wanted a mural um, of this kind of Austrian mount, mountain-esque landscape painted on his garage. Um, and it was where him and his late wife used to travel. So now he can look out his kitchen window and, and see that landscape. So that was really cool. That was a fun kind of surprise project that came along this summer too that we had a good time with. Uh, we have a question for you here. Um, which is your favorite mural, Erin? I think that um, 
Red Arrow might always be my favorite, my favorite mural. Um, I think that it's probably just because it was the first mural that like um, that I kind of orchestrated from from the beginning, from finding the wall to coming up with the subject matter and you know putting all of the pieces together. So um, I think that one holds a special place in my heart. And we have a question from Lucy Bray. How do you plan for the maintenance of the murals? That's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, I think that it's got to be something that kind of becomes, it's like right now murals, you know, the painting of murals is becoming part of the culture of the community. Um, and I think that that maintenance has to kind of be built into it eventually. Um, I, like Greg had shared, I have a studio space in Algoma. And Algoma has lots of murals that were painted in 2007 by the Wall Dogs. And <clears throat> excuse me, this summer I um, restored one of those murals and, and uh, we're going to restore another one next summer. So I think that, you know, as, as time passes and, you know, as we continue to feel um, an ownership for these murals, we're going to have to to work on restoring them and maintaining them. Um, but basically, you know, I kind of learned that process. You kind of stand it down and it's a lot. It's a lot of repainting the mural, um, but it's it's even more planned out for you than, you know, it, there's all of this other work isn't involved. Yeah. How long do you think the murals will last when you put the graffiti coat on? Um, I know that, you know, it's it's paint on a wall. <laughs> so hopefully they'll last, you know, at least 10 years, probably more than that. I think it depends how much sunlight they get, um, you know, how, how they're treated. Um, and, you know, and we do everything that we can, you know, to, to really prep the surfaces and, and, and you know, do all the painting properly so that they'll survive for a long time. We, we have a question from one of your teammates, hmm. from David Carpenter. Since you got to do your dream wall with the PC building, is there another dream wall you have now? I have yet to scope that out, David, if you have ideas. Um, I, have been, I have been messaging building owners, <laughs> trying to plot out next year's summer, uh, next summer's projects. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, we've, we've been in contact with somebody from Milwaukee and some different places too. So I want to keep uh, doing murals in Manitowoc, but maybe spread out a little bit more too. I really wonder uh, about um, Brees Malting on the, on the lake side, whether there's any, any big surfaces that yeah. Uh, Badger, uh, people on the SS Badger coming in would, would be able to, to see from pretty far away. Yeah, that would be very cool. You see like those, those paintings of the big silos and stuff and that would, yeah. that would be neat. Yeah. And Joel's asking, what is the graffiti coat? Um, the graffiti coat is a clear coat that we put on the mural and basically it protects the mural. So if somebody was going to um, you know, paint on top of our mural or do any graffiti on it, we could just take, there's a mural spirits kind of solution that we could just take and we could wipe off what they did and our mural would be intact. So it's, um, it's just a protective coat um, so that, you know, our painting stays, um, stays safe from that kind of thing. Um, Liz Gordon's asking, did you do the mural at the library? And she thinks it's fabulous and so intricate. Yeah, I was part of that project. David designed that one. Um, when uh, we were approached for that project, I just knew that that had David's name all over it. And he created, yeah, it's a fantastic design that I was really lucky to be part of. So um, I was up there painting with him, but he was definitely leading that project. Erin, are there any new types of surface that you'd like to do that you haven't done yet? Not necessarily that I can think of right now. I mean, we've painted on a street. Uh, we painted vinyl siding for the first time this year. Um, we've, you know, we painted on metal. We've painted a lot of a lot of different surfaces. Um, so no, Greg, I can't think of any, you know, a particular one. I really, I think my favorite surfaces to work on, again, are like Red Arrow, where I can kind of like pull the building into the design. So there's like a door and different changes in the texture and the brick that I think really add a lot to the overall image. Um, so like old old factories and, and that kind of um, surface is really exciting. 
Uh, Robert Thieker asks, are there possibilities for portable murals, which I think is interesting. That is an interesting idea to do portable murals. Um, there's a lot of people who are doing murals on fabric indoors and then installing them outdoors. Um, when I think of portable murals, I, Diana had sent me something kind of recently about um, in Milwaukee, they, they did murals on picnic tables and then put them out in the community. And that would be kind of an interesting, interesting project. So I'm sure that we could come up with different ways of having murals move around town and, and doing something creative like that. We could paint all the city um, vehicles. We could, yes. And and buses. I mean, like in cities, it's so fun sometimes when buses drive by and they've got, um, you know, cool imagery on them. Yeah, the full wraps on, on buses. Yeah, right? of artwork, you know, of, yeah. Well, I, I also would think maybe there's possibilities of uh, of doing some large large printing that we might be able to consider to be temporary murals as well. Like with the really big prints project. Yeah, the Public Arts Committee um, is working towards that this year. So Diana and I have been kind of working at that um, and hope, hopefully we'll have some some really big prints pasted in some kind of um, unexpected alley art this summer. Yeah. Well, we have another uh, question here from Danica, I think, we Deans. Uh, she admires how you're able to work with so many different people and entities to pull together these beautiful projects. And she wants to know how far you'd be willing to travel to bring your amazing work to other spaces. In a time without COVID, I love to travel. <laughs> I, would go, I would go anywhere. Like I said, um, you know, it's... Um, it's exciting to think about kind of reaching out to Milwaukee in different areas um, as well. And I mean, even further than that, um, you know, a lot of mural artists kind of travel all around the country. And I, I think that would be fantastic to be able to have some opportunities to spread our um, our designs and our work other places. It's interesting, too, when I say that, because like if you look around Manitowoc, you probably wouldn't think that the same artist did all of this work because um, we approach each project with like totally different styles and different designs. Um, so so I don't know, you know, which which style we would choose to be our own if we were going to start traveling. Let's see, it looks like that's about it. There's a lot of people saying how much they liked the presentation. Greg, did you have any more questions for Aaron? No, I just have another thank you to give to Aaron. Uh, we feel uh, not only uh, fortunate as a museum to have you on the board, but also just fortunate for our community to have uh, somebody who's such a wonderful artist, but also so passionate about sharing that art with the public. So thank you to you and to uh, Don and to David and all the other collaborators on these public arts projects. Thank you. And and yeah, it's, it's like I said, you know, um, I think if I were living in any other community, I probably want to become a public artist. So I think Manitowoc too for, for, you know, letting us take off and do this. Um, it's been really, really important to, to who I've become as an artist and a person. Um, and I love working with David and Don. We we have a good time and do good work. And and thank you to the RAR. I, I love the RAR. And um, we, we're really thankful for everybody who tuned in tonight. Um, we also have a few more live streams coming up next Wednesday. Diana's going to be uh, doing a live stream uh, on uh, Walt Kuhn, the artist and uh, organizer of the famous Armory Show in New York. Uh, Diana, anything to uh, add on that one? Um, just that it's going to be really exciting, and we're going to look at two of his paintings from our collection. And then on uh, December the 12th, Saturday, December the 12th at 1 p.m., uh, we have uh, Sonia Vasquez, one of the uh, contributors to um, the Lakeside Foods mural, uh, who uh, has been working with us on something, in some ways, I guess, the the idea is somewhat connected with the, the mural, which is the uh, Manitowoc Community Portrait pro Program. And that's a project that uh, is sponsored by the Art Bridges Foundation that uh, allows you to participate. So anybody out there who is interested, you can pick up a, a, a self-portrait kit. Not only will it have a small piece of Arches art paper for you to do a self-portrait, 
but it will also have uh, a question about what it means to be part of Manitowoc. And so part of this project is that we collect kind of our community self-identity through all of our individual self-identities. You also have an opportunity to do a self-portrait, which I know can be very daunting for even a very talented artist. And uh, Sonia has been nice enough to uh, provide a tutorial, which you can find on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page, uh, that can help you to just kind of get the basics to figure out how you get started on doing a self-portrait. So you can check that out, and that's up right now. I also wanted to mention, because it's not just about what the RAR West provides, but all art in our community. Uh, tomorrow, the uh, Hamilton Wood Type and Printing Museum is doing a Hamilton Hang, uh, and that is tomorrow, December the 4th at noon, with Julie, Julie Chen of the Flying Fish Press. Uh, you can go to Hamilton Wood Type's uh, website, www.woodtype.org to sign up for that uh, Zoom meeting and to find out more. We uh, hope you can tune in and enjoy what they provide as well as what we provide for the artistic community in Manitowoc. Thanks again, Aaron, and thank you to all of you who tuned in.